All right, so while doing some research for another video, I came across a ridiculous law. So first, I want to show you how to find it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Google and we're going to go to the search form and we're going to type in Texas statutes. Hit enter. All right, and so this first link is the link that we want to click. We want to click on it. And here we have the Texas Constitution and statutes home. And so here we see the Constitution and the statute. So basically, this is an outline of the state of Texas. And we want to expand this Texas statute. Let's expand it. And we want to go down to Civil Practice and Remedies Code. So anything that you feel that, that harms you in, inside the state of Texas, this is where you want to go to. Uh, look for any uh, remedies and the practices on and the uh, regulations on how to obtain those remedies and what we want to do is we want to go down to so we have extraordinary remedies liabilities and tort uh, not governmental liability we want to go down to the miscellaneous provisions the title six and here we can find some utterly ridiculous uh, laws and so let's see civil remedies for enforcement structure limitation liabilities for certain programs harmful access by computer discourse on social media I don't know why that's a law destruction of certain liability of negligent hiring year 2000 computer day failure uh, License, uh, liability, certain mergers, consolidation. Where is that stupid law? I'm construction liability for allowing. My oh, here it is. Uh, liability for allowing minors to access pornographic material. Now, this the title alone should scream uh, utter insanity. But let's go ahead and click it. And this is what I want everyone to review. All right, so Civil Practice and Remedies Code, Title VI, Miscellaneous Provisions, Chapter 129B, Liability for Allowing Minors to Access Pornographic Material. So, so each and every one of these laws starts out with some definition, but I want you to go down and pay attention to some specific information. So here we can see at the end of the sections, they there are some metadata. So here we can see it was added by Acts in 2023 of the 88th legislature that's the texas legislature chapter 676 of house bill 1181 and effective september 1st 2023 so this is fairly recent when this uh law became effective because it's just what it's still uh february of 2024 so um anyway so what i want you to do um Seeing as how this particular law is effective, I want you to try and travel to one of your favorite um, explicit sites. And I want you to look for these particular notices. All right, do that for me right quick and then come back to this video. <clears throat> so after traveling to one of your favorite explicit sites and looking for this particular notice, I'm sure you didn't find it because I've looked I've checked already and I didn't find it. But we want what we want to do is we want to analyze this particular and law and why uh, it's an absolute overreach by the state of Texas on um, these types of uh, services available online. And so let's go up a little bit. But what you should always do is always start with the definition so you can know exactly what the law is uh, talking about, is enumerating. And then what we want to do is we want to go down to publication of material harmful to minors, a commercial entity that knowingly and intentionally publishes or distributes material on an Internet website, including a social media platform, more than one third of which is that type of material harmful to minors shall use reasonable age verification methods as described by Section 129B-003 to verify that an individual attempting to access the material is of 18 years of age or older. A commercial entity that performs the age verification required or a third party that performs the age verification required by may not retain any identifying information of the individual. Now here, 
we run into a problem. So the state is that we cannot maintain any identifying information of the individual. Now, um, so I understand that initially you may be able to verify that a person is below or above the age of 18, but then on those subsequent um, accesses of information, how do you then further uh, verify that particular age? Because, you know, just because I'm age 18 uh, today, uh, or I'm age, let's say I'm age uh, 15 today, I'm not age 15 um, six months from today. You know, I'm age 15 in six months. So how do you um, maintain that type of information without uh, retaining retaining the information of the particular individual. And so, you know, just because I'm 15 or 16 today, you know, three or four years from now, I may not be 15 or 16. You know, I may have um, continued to live life and, and aged a bit, matured a bit, um, and uh, educated myself on um, various uh, types of information. So how, how would a, a commercial entity or any third party entity uh, maintain that type of uh, tracking system without uh, retaining any identifying information. So in short, it's absolutely impossible for it to do so. And the only way that it can do it is if it uh, maintains some sort of uh, collaboration and association with uh, a government entity for that type of inf information to uh, perform that, those successful uh, age verifications. And I think that's exactly what they want to do. They want to make sure that these companies are um, cooperating and uh, sharing information with the government at all times. Let's go down and see. Reasonable age verification methods. In this section, digital identification means information stored on a digital network that may be accessed by a commercial entity and that serves as proof of the identity of an individual. A commercial entity that knowingly and intentionally publishes, distributes under this chapter shall require an individual to prove a digital identification or comply with a commercial age verification system that verifies age using government issued identification or a commercially reasonable method that relies on public or private transactional data to verify. Well, you know, up here you said, you know, the commercial entity may not retain any identifying information. So this right here is nullified. And the only one that remains uh, in, oper in operation is a government issued identification. But even then, you know, who who is allowed to retain that government um, issued identification besides the individual and a government entity? And so still, uh, this is actually, you know, inoperable unless, you know, a government is a uh, corresponding with these particular uh, websites. And these websites, and these owners of these sites can be located anywhere in the world. Um, so that's very concerning that the government would be trying to track, and, and not just not just minors, but all adults, you know, who are they, who are they, um, who are they, you know, collaborating with, who are they talking to, who are they uh, associating with? And what, when, where, and why? Uh, that's very uh, scary. But you know, another thing. Um, let's go down to this. Display this notice at the bottom of every page of the internet website. U.S. Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration helpline, and then this helpline is free. Confidential Information Services, English, Spanish for individuals. That's our turn. All right. Hold on. There's another one I want to show you. Oh, never mind. It's right in front of my face. Okay, so they're saying that a commercial entity is required to use reasonable age verification methods under that section and shall display the following. It shall display Texas Health and Human Services warning, Texas Health and Human Services warning, and Texas Health and Human Services warning, and this uh, following notice. So all these websites that deliver this type of information is supposed to issue a Texas Health and Human Services warning. Why? So, you know, Texas has an, an absolutely outstanding uh, 
<laughs> level of arrogance to require someone in uh let's say florida to read a texas health and human services warning and we don't even have to stop at florida let's say someone in in, in mexico guatemala uh colombia argentina uh algeria serbia nigeria um guangzhou india nepal you know would have to uh, read a a texas health and human services warning as if You know, it's as if um, only individuals and lawmakers in Texas are smart enough and responsible enough to protect not only kids in Texas, but to protect Nepalese and Sri Lankan children from their negligent parents. And still, you would have to accept the false reality of the activity that got you here in the first place just suddenly stopped and not happening in every home um, anyway. So, you know... Um, this particular law is thoroughly preposterous and the, uh, attitude must have been, you know, just overwhelm overwhelmingly pompous to even get it passed. Um, all right, so I'm, uh, tell you something different. So what has actually happened, there is actually a lawsuit that prevented the operation of this particular law. Let me show you. And so... You can look up the lawsuit that actually uh, stopped this particular that particular provision. So it's a Free Speech Coalition uh, Inc. versus Angela Angela Comanero in her official capacity as interim attorney general for the state of Texas. Okay, so Ken Paxton must still be in trouble. But all right, here it is anyway. So I'm gonna have to do another video. I'm gonna stop this video right here. All right, if you've made it this far, I want to thank you. But before you go, please leave me a comment down in the comment section and like this video for me. Thanks.